Novak continues to shop its patent portfolio and fend off the possibility of bankruptcy. Now a big shareholder is asking Kodak to get rid of its so-called poison pill shareholder rights plan. For more on what this means, let's head back over to Bloomberg West editor-at-large, Corey Johnson. Corey? Yeah, thanks, Emily. Kodak adopted the plan in August to prevent any single investor from acquiring more than 4.9% of the company. But Investment Partners Asset Management is now demanding that the Kodak board remove the poison pill, which could open the door for a bidding war over Eastman Kodak. Investment partner Greg Albella show, joins us now from New York. Greg, let me ask you, why do you think these guys enacted the plan in the first place? Uh, I, I, it's, it's kind of beyond me. Uh, the stated reason is that uh, they wanted to preserve the value of their net operating loss uh, taxes. So, um, which they, I think they well, estimate. Well, it sounds, but it, I mean, this, if they keep the poison pill in, in, in place and they stay in charge of the ship that's, you know, running into the ground right now. Well, um, you know, I generally, generally what poison pills are used for are to thwart takeovers uh, or to impede the ability for a large shareholder to uh, effect change. Um, but uh, the stated reason uh, that Kodak has uh, cited is that they want to uh, preserve the value of their tax uh, loss um, carry forwards. Uh, although there was an article in the Wall Street Journal um, which cites uh, a, a number of reasons that that argument may not hold water. Well, now you, got, you wrote a very strong letter to the board. I want to read from part of that letter where you say, you know, very plainly, the poison pill should be removed immediately so that the market can determine the value of the company as an independent entity or as a potential acquisition target. Would this open the door to make this an acquisition target? Well, what I need to do first is say that I'm not telling anybody how to vote when this proposal comes up. Uh, I can't. Uh, uh, if you think a poison pill is in your best interest, then by all means uh, vote against our proposal. Um, but uh, I generally just dislike uh, any company that installs any uh, anti-takeover mechanism. So uh, its removal, I think, is in the best interest of shareholders. Very interestingly, uh, one of the largest shareholders, the only large shareholder that hasn't been dumping their stake, has been uh, Bill Gates' investment firm, Cascade. I, I noticed that. Uh, generally, when uh, you're invested in something that's a turnaround, um, as many value investors do, you've got a couple of options, uh, and they're fight or flight. Uh, they have not uh, fled. Uh, and we've chosen to fight on behalf of our clients because we think that there is value here and so far the board and management have been unsuccessful in unlocking it. Uh, but where, is, where do you think the most of the value is? Is it patents? Is it the, the printer business which some people see a turnaround? I don't know if it's there or not, but certainly the patents have been uh, ascribed a great deal of value greater than the current uh, enterprise value of the company. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, there are really, uh, there's a, a pretty decent, uh, some of the parts analysis that was done by Mark Kaufman at uh, Rafferty that takes the underlying businesses and the patents and uh, attributes a value to those. Uh, and he comes up with um, a, a total net asset value that I think is around $10. Um, I honestly think it's probably something in between where we are now in that number, uh, but still substantially higher where this, than where the stock is trading for now. Well, and there's a long way to go from where the stock is now to $10 a share. I mean, do you think that the, the current excitement about patents, you've got Google trying to acquire Motorola Mobility, you've got uh, other uh, the acquisition of the Nortel patents. Why haven't the Kodak patents gotten that bid? Um, well, we don't know that they haven't gotten a bid yet. Uh, there was some talk about some of the uh, bidders uh, making some kind of uh, claim that they, they were worried about fraudulent conveyance and that the bondholders would come after them. But to the degree that the company is running a process, an actual bidding process, I don't think that argument holds water. Um, hopefully, we will see some resolution shorter in, in the short term, sooner rather than later. Uh, but it's, it's beyond me why we haven't seen some sort of activity already. Uh, bottom line, do you think the Kodak management has got to go to make this company actually work? Uh, I think they've been given lots of time. Uh, when this current CEO took over, the net worth of the company was about $3.2 billion. It's now negative $1.6 billion. So he's been given resources uh, six years. Um, I, I've maintained this entire year that uh, really a turnaround expert, uh, somebody who has some credibility on Wall Street in um, unlocking value of 
uh, commercial uh, um, intellectual property really needs to take the helm. That's my personal opinion. Good. Greg, it's uh, kind of you to spare Antonio Perez another winter in Rochester. We'll see if he gets it. Okay. Uh, Greg Abella of Investment Partners Asset Management, thank you for joining Not us. Emily?